an investment in knowledge pays the best interest an investment in knowledge pays the best interest a quote by benjamin franklin with this we'll work out one more problem from the topic curved beams the problem statement is like this a curved link of the mechanism made from a round steel bar as shown in figure the material of the link is a plain carbon steel 30 c8 with the yield stress in ten tension sigma yt that is equal to 400 newton per mm square and the factor of safety is a 3.5 determine the dimensions of the link and the sketch he has given in this particular problem in the sketch it is clear it is subjected with a load of 1 kilo newton and uh, diameter of the curved beam is capital D and uh, capital R he has given that is uh, nothing but uh, radius at centroidal axis this is about the given problem. Now we will list out the data from this particular problem a curved link of the mechanism made from a round steel bar with the plain carbon steel that material. So, curved link material is a plain carbon steel 30 C8 yield stress in a tension that sigma yt that is equal to 400 newton per mm square factor of safety that is n that is equal to 3.5 determine the dimensions of the link. So, here unknown dimensions in the figure it is clear we need to find capital D and uh, capital R that is diameter of the bar capital D and radius at the centroidal axis R these are all the dimensions we need to find by referring this particular figure and from the figure it is clear load is applied is 1 kilo Newton in tension. So, load F is equal to 1000 Newton. Now, we will list out the equations or formula required to solve this particular problem. Here the unknown we supposed to find that is the dimensions of the link capital D as well as R diameter of the curved link and radius at centroidal axis R. Here we must go for the equation that is total stress induced in the curved member. So, in the member it is clear at inner and outer fiber stress is going to induce in that inner fiber uh, direct stress uh, which makes uh, uh, tensile load and also bending load also makes the tension in the member. So, maximum stress will induce at the inner fiber and outer fiber the stress total stress will be direct stress minus bending stress minus the reason is uh, due to bending the materials that the molecules is going to compress at the outer fiber. So, total stress is sigma that is equal to sigma d minus sigma b r naught if you are considering at outer fiber. So, if I if I took outer fiber uh, obviously the stress value is going to reduce, but the dimensions always we supposed to find for the maximum stress. So, I will consider the inner fiber. So, sigma max is equal to direct stress plus bending stress at inner fiber sigma b r i and here to evaluate the direct stress sigma d uh, we have the equation since it is a tension tension load sigma d is equal to force by area f by a this equation we supposed to use. Next bending stress at inner fiber for that relation we have equation number 10.1 b page number 159 sigma b r i that is equal to uh, bending moment m into c i divided by a e into r i. We supposed to find these unknowns first bending moment m radial distance uh, from neutral axis to the inner fiber C i cross section area of the beam that is A eccentricity that is the distance between uh, uh, radius at neutral axis and radius at centroidal axis and R i radius at inner fiber. This equation is supposed to find and uh, for the equation total stress sigma max since here he has given the yield stress. So, sigma max is equal to sigma y t yield stress divided by factor of safety this equation we have to use. Some other equations also required to find some other unknowns of uh, uh, bending stress at inner fiber that we will discuss while uh, solving the problem. Now, we will switch over to the solution dimensions of the link capital D is equal to question mark R is equal to question mark. We will go to the first equation total stress induced in the curved member sigma max at inner fiber sigma max is equal to sigma d plus sigma b r i uh, for timing we will call that as equation number 1. So, here we will find out the direction sigma d. Sigma d is equal to force by area since the member is uh, circular in cross section. So, area is equal to pi d square by 4. So, sigma d is equal to f d out by pi d square by 4 and here diameter is capital D. Diameter of the curved beam is capital D. 
So, sigma d is equal to 1000 divided by pi d square divided by 4. By simplifying this, we are getting direct stress in terms of uh, diameter d. So, sigma d is equal to 1273.24 divided by d square Newton per mm square. We will call it as equation number 2. After getting the direct stress, now try to find out the bending stress at inner fiber. The relation is sigma b r i is equal to m into c i divided by a e r i. So, now here uh, bending moment m is equal to force into perpendicular distance. Here perpendicular distance is a radius at the central axis. So, bending moment m is equal to f into r, Thous f is force is nothing but 1000 into uh, radius at the central axis is 4d. By simplifying this we are getting bending moment m is equal to 4000 d, we will call that as equation number 4. Now, we will find out radius at neutral axis r n. Now, by referring table 10.1 page number 162 of uh, Balvi Reddy and Mahadevan design data handbook of uh, edition 4. So, here relation is there for second figure solid circular section uh, eccentricity E is equal to R minus R n where R n is equal to half C square divided by R minus square root of R square minus C square. We will use that particular equation to find out the value of radius at neutral axis. R n that is equal to half C square divided by R minus square root of R square minus C square and R n is equal to here C is nothing but from the figure it is clear it is capital D by 2. So, that I have substituted in that equation. So, half into d by 2 square divided by 4 d minus square root of 4 d whole square minus capital D by 2 square. By simplifying this, we are getting radius at neutral axis R n in terms of diameter d that is 3.9843 d. We will call this as equation number 5. Now, we will find out the eccentricity E is equal to R minus R n. So, R value he has given in the figure in terms of uh, diameter d. So, E is equal to 4D minus Rn just now we calculated radius at neutral axis that is 3.9843D. By simplifying this we are getting the value eccentricity E is equal to 0.0157D. We will call that as equation number 6. Next, a radius of inner fiber. Once we get the value uh, it is possible to proceed. So, Ri is equal to radius at neutral axis R minus diameter of the wire we need to consider. We are supposed to subtract the diameter of the beam then it is possible to get the inner fiber. By adding uh, radius of the beam we are getting the R naught that is R naught is equal to 4 d plus 0.5 d and R i is equal to 4 d minus 0.5 d. So, here 4 d minus 0.5 d it gives 3.5 d R i is equal to 3.5 d we will call that as equation number 7. Next radial distance between neutral axis and inner fiber of the beam C i is equal to R n minus R i by using that particular equation it is a radial distance. C i is equal to R n we have that is 3.9843 d minus R i just now we calculated that is 3.5 d by simplifying we are getting the value of C i is equal to 0.4843 d. If you need the value C naught then we supposed to use the relation C i plus C naught is equal to capital D total diameter of the beam. So, here we need only C i, I evaluated only C i value that is a 0.4843 d we will call that as equation number 8. Now, we will try to evaluate the cross section area of the beam. Area A is equal to pi d square by 4 and here diameter D is a capital D, pi d square divided by 4 by simplifying that we are getting the area A is equal to 0.7854 capital D square. We will call that as equation number 9. After getting various unknowns such as bending moment m, radial distance ci, area A, eccentricity E and radius at inner fiber ri will substitute all these in equation number 3. So, by substituting those values in equation number 3 we are getting sigma b r i is equal to 4000 d into c i is 0.4843 d divided by area is 0.7854 d square into eccentricity e is 0.0157 d into r i is 3.5 d. By simplifying that we are getting the value sigma b r i that is bending stress at inner fiber that is equal to 44.88 into 10 to 3 divided by d square. Now, LHS of the equation number 1 that is sigma max that can be evaluated by using the equation sigma max is equal to yield stress divided by factor of safety. Yield stress is given in the problem that is 400, 400 divided by factor of safety is 3.5 by simplifying that we are getting the value sigma max is equal to 
114.28 Newton per mm square. We will call that as equation number 11. Now, we will by substituting equation number 10, 11 and 2 in equation number 1, we are getting sigma max is equal to sigma d plus sigma b r i. Sigma max is 114.28 that is equal to sigma d that is from equation 2 that is 1273.24 divided by d square plus sigma b r i from equation number 10 that is 44.88 into 10 to the 3 divided by d square. So, capital D is equal to we are getting 20.096 mm, I took that as approximately 21 mm. Therefore, the question what you asked that is the dimensions of the curved beam in that the first unknown that is diameter of the beam capital D that is 21 mm and other unknown is radialus centroidal axis R that is 4 times the diameter of the beam. So, 4 into 21 that is equal to 84 radius at centroidal axis is 84. This completes this particular problem solution. Thank you.